How to survive in 2019 as a mortgage loan officer. And a huge surprise on this video is I'm gonna to speak to a lot of loan officers that do purchase business, yes. I'm gonna teach you how to survive in 2019, but more importantly, I'm gonna cover a lot of information over the next three days. Today's Monday, I'm gonna go all the way out through Tuesday and Wednesday in discussing the three major components on how to be a better loan officer in doing more purchase loans. Let's face it, guys. I mean, the purchase business is blowing up right now. In my company alone, it represents about 45% in climbing of our total overall production. And if this is your first time joining or watching any of the content here at Sales Remastered, you know that I work for one of the top direct mortgage bankers in the entire country, and I happen to represent the number one team. So needless to say, you know, we are obviously adapting, and my company is, is putting millions and millions and millions of dollars into creating. Um, this engine that just generates purchase business and so needless to say we have both of course both the retail which are outside loan officers and then we also have the call center experience which is basically anyone who's working through the phone primarily they, they're not out in the field knocking on the doors or networking with realtors per se but primarily working with the consumers but either which which whichever form or whichever sandbox you're working in if you're in the streets pounding the pavements knocking on doors meeting with realtors knocking on open houses or you're inside the call center these three days are going to be very helpful for you in learning how to really increase your overall purchase business but position yourself properly so that you can obtain more referral business from realtors so if that sounds like something you want to know you're gonna to want to stick around for every single video and watch them all the way through Monday Tuesday and Wednesday but more importantly I ask you to please comment below with your biggest takeaway maybe even timestamp a section in the video that you believe is the most helpful and then from there I'll actually analyze it and put out more content based Based on that so again welcome the sales remastered this these next three episodes are going to be designed to help you increase your purchase business let's go what's up everybody welcome back to sales remastered my name is daniel and i'm your host and in these episodes again monday tuesday and wednesday we're primarily going to focus around purchase business whether you're an outside mortgage loan officer or you're an inside mortgage loan officer these three major components covered over the next three business days are designed for one thing and it's to help you survive in the year 2019 going into the new year as a mortgage loan officer and we're going to adapt and really pay homage to where the market is going but more importantly position ourselves so that we could thrive when the market actually gets there so uh, for today Monday and uh, today is is October 15th 2018 what we're gonna pay attention to first of the th the very first of the three is the consumer because I think that the consumer individual consumer that you deal with it, and, and, and enabling yourself to capture their trust and their loyalty is really going to help you avoid the number one issue, number one problem that a lot of loan officers face and it's basically the client just going ghost or the, the buyer just going ghost on you, um, they're shopping you or they're going to get persuaded by maybe the builder's preferred lender or the realtor that they're working with, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to they're going to turn their back on the loan officer and thus put all that time that the loan officer put into that loan file and crafting and, and, and fostering that relationship. It's just going to put it in the trash. And I want to help you understand the dynamics of speaking with a prospect from hello all the way up to the point of congratulations, enjoy your new home or congratulations on your brand new purchase in the next chapter of your life. So starting off with the initial conversation that you have with your, with your buyer, I think it really does start down from the very beginning and, and as they contact you, typically it has to do with being pre-qualified or they just want to learn a little bit more about your products and we as loan officers, we have to understand where in the process they are. Now sometimes their position is actually determined based on your company's marketing efforts and so they might be just you know a lead source that just introduces you to first time home buyers and then there could be campaigns that just put you in front of people who are just in the market to buy. And as a loan officer, you really need to position yourself 
with first as being a consultant, you are not a salesman. You know, I think that the probably one of the biggest problems that loan officers have, and this is even on the refinance side, is primarily you're just trying to sell. And you know you're just trying to sell because you're doing a lot of talking. You're doing a lot of marketing by mouth. And what I mean by marketing by mouth is saying, hey, we're the number one company in the entire universe. And it's, it's a great day at my company and we have 900 star ratings. You know, it's just, it, all it is is marketing. And so I think that that sometimes we forget that when we have a prospect on the phone with us, it's a reason. You know what I mean? They're giving us their time. And a lot of people want to protect their time. And that actually joins in on, on the actual message is that we need to convey that. We need to convey that, that that their time is important, but more importantly, underline that our time is important as well. And so that's going to be kind of sprinkled throughout the message of this video. But when we engage with the prospect for the very first time, whether you're new, whether you're intermediate, whether you're seasoned, I think you really need to just remember one important thing is that these prospects, whether they are getting pre-qualified, whether they're a first time home buyer, or whether they own now and they're actually buying into a next home, um, they're not as familiar with the verbiage or the logistics or the process as you are. Um, they might have an idea and we, we can go ahead and adapt and, 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 and make them believe that, we be that they believe they have an idea of how the process works, but they really don't. And so we have to position ourselves as the expert, as the consultant, as the tour guide. And what we're going to find is that when we're speaking with people who are coming from like a first time home buyer and why it's important to understand which, which role um, the buyer, the, the person you're pre-qualifying plays is because you need to be empathetic. I think that empathy is a huge, huge dynamic in sales that a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of uh, 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 low producing salespeople just don't, do not have. And the reason why empathy, empathy works more, more so with, with purchasing is because you have to really be on their side, right? Like, like a lot of times when people do refinance, a lot of people that you engage with, they've already kind of done the process. So they kind of have an idea how the process works. Well, a lot of people who are buying into real estate now, they don't, they don't have no idea how it works, right? Like if you talk to them, they have no idea where the qualification process starts. You could tell that they're nervous in their tone. And the last thing you want to do is be nervous in your tone <laughs> because then you're just going to have two nervous people. It's going to be super awkward. But where you want to come in at is you want to set up the expectation properly. And so whoever you're talking to, your primary goal in the very first application or the very first conversation is just to get an idea of where they are now and whether or not you can help them save time by giving them a, an accurate approval or pre-approval. And why that's important, and this is how you can explain it, is because it, in the market that we face today, when we enter into a negotiation or when we make an offer onto a property, you want to position yourself to be most favorable in that offer. The last thing you want to do is position yourself where the company or the the seller's agent is not going to have any confidence in your offer because if they made an offer and I'm talking about they as like your 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 buyer if they were to make an offer on a home and then and then another person was to make an offer on the home just because their prequal might be a little on, more on point than yours or the, the let me say the the wording or the verbiage or just the overall relationship and history of maybe your company versus the other company plays a pretty big role on how the seller's agent influences the seller on making the decision right like as far as like okay who do we pay attention to more who do we think is serious or what have you and you need to position yourself as being that one you need to put yourself in a position of being that lender and that lender or that loan officer is, is, is going to do their homework. They're going to dot their I's and cross their T's. But why it's the, the upside for the prospect and why it protects the consumer is because the piece of paper, which is the pre-approval letter that you put in their hands is as good as paper. And this is what you're talking about. You're not talking about, hey, it's a great day at my company. You know, every day's sunny. <laughs> we got 9 million five-star reviews. That's all good and all, but they've already been marketed to. And again, you got to remember why they're on the phone with you to begin with is because they're interested in what you have to offer. So you don't need to keep selling them. What you need to do is actually be that tour guide and be that consultant. And how you do that is you set up the expectation of what that first call represents. And what that first call represents ultimately is that person 
trying to get qualified to work with you. Remember that. They need to qualify to work with you. And so you hold this authoritative position that sometimes we forget about because our whole dyna or our whole mindset is it is involved with selling. Like I need to sell this person so that they choose me. I need to sell this person so they don't leave me. You know, I get it, but at the same time, what you offer is something that's more unique and you need to believe that in your heart. And so that engagement with that prospect, the very first engagement has to be all about kind of like playing hard to get but more importantly you need to sell the result of that engagement to them and that result is having a pre-approval that's as good as cash that's going to be taken seriously at the time of offer and there's a lot of different ways that you can sprinkle fear into that like you know like you don't want to get emotionally invested into a home and then ultimately find out that you lost it because they just simply didn't like your pre-approval letter so why most home buyers prefer my company is because that is because of the the track record that we have with delivering closings on time but the track record that we have with delivering pre-approvals that are actually underwritten or actually pre-approved you see there's a lot of loan officers that just dish out pre-qualifications and it's just based off of a conversation and they don't even check your income until about two or three weeks into escrow which is very dangerous the last thing you want to do is get emotionally involved put earnest money deposit down and then move all your stuff inside of a u-haul truck just to come to find out you were never qualified to buy the home to begin with and now you and your entire family's at a motel six with all your with all your personal belongings inside of a u-haul truck you know it's a nightmare avoid that nightmare by making sure you dot your i's and cross your t's today and i'm going to show you how to do that today does that make sense that's how you convey the message but number two you know, when you position yourself as a consultant and teaching them that your your role is to basically protect their time and you're conveying it in a way where you are actually about protecting your time, you know, and say, hey, you know what, before I, before I uh, go even any further, let's go ahead and make sure that you qualify. You have to position yourself to request a full package. But at the same time, you know, it's exciting to get a full package, right? Especially on a purchase. Because you're like, oh yeah, I got a full package, I got mind control, I'm a Jedi. But at the same time, that pre-approval letter isn't really business, boo-boo. Like, that's not a loan. Like, it could be three, four months until it becomes a loan. Or sometimes it can even take just a week before they enter into contracts. So you're never really sure. But at the same time, don't get caught up in the in the smoke and mirrors and believing that that pre-approval letter is a loan. In other words, you're, you're, you're spending the money before you get it. And so that's a little mind, mindset, tra mindset hack that I want to share with you because you might get on this entire momentum of just like yeah i get pals all day bro i'm a i'm a pal beast <laughs> but then those pals don't turn into loans or you're not doing it right and they end up leaving you because they figure out well shit if he pre if he pre-approved me well then i can get pre-approved anywhere that i that i want i can get pre-approved over here if i wanted to and so then that, that loyalty game is gone but what you need to do is that is in order to position yourself in order to get the package here's one trick that's very helpful and this is actually going to convey over to tomorrow's message which is is how to sell the realtor because today is all about how to sell the consumer but one of the one of the important pieces in actually getting a pre-approval letter is you got to get that that uh, sign of compliance right you have to get your your uh, in order to gauge their trust or their loyalty you got to see if they're if they're even listening to what you request and if you do it right and you follow the content that I share here at sales remastered you're going to find that they're going to comply with whatever you request and anyway how you the 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 way to really get their um, uh, full package. And when I'm talking about full package is their two years tax returns, their proof of, of earnest money, their um, you know their, their sources of, of their bank deposits or whatever you need to actually get into your pre-approval letter, uh, the W-2s, the pay stubs, the LOEs, whatever it is, right? If they're getting gift funds or what have you. And, and how to position yourself to get the full package the very first time is you actually offer an incentive. And that incentive could be lender credit, Right, and typically that's the most common is saying, hey, you know what, we, my company, in order to avoid using our resources for doing multiple uh, anal an analysis, right? Like in other words, what you're, what you're saying is that in order for your file not to get kicked to the back of the line and then and then get processed all over again, we actually offer an incentive up front where if you complete the list in detail, not, instead of sending 25% here, 30% there, 50% there, you know, we actually offer an incentive to give you a $500 lender credit. And to the loan officer, 
answer, all we gotta do is ultimately build that in. You just gotta make proper note inside the conversation lock to ensure that you're building in that $500 lender credit into your lock. But ultimately what you do is you say, hey, you know what, uh, my com what we do here and why most home, home buyers actually prefer our companies because we offer a $500 incentive to help the home buyer uh, you know, uh, beat down those closing costs. But here's how you do it though. Um, in order to get the $500 incentive, you actually have to be very thorough with, with submitting a full package. It can't be incomplete. It can't be 80%. It can't even be 90%. If you, if you are able to, to put together the entire package within the 24 hours that I actually release your disclosures, then you are incentivized to get a $500 towards, towards your closing costs. And this is total lender credit. And the reason for that is because if you, if you submitted 75% and your file went in, in line for pre-underwriting or pre pre-approval uh, processing ultimately what happens is it, it gets discovered that you're missing documents and we can't do the process so it gets kicked all the way to the back of the line and then it has to go through every single section all over again once you get the other 25% or, 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 or even you know worse yet if you if if you get only 10% of that 25% or whatever only pieces of that missing item then it has to go through that entire process and then if it gets discovered that it's missing again it has to go all the way to the very back of the line again and so so our company basically wants to avoid having our processors and our resources do the process over and over and over again. And you so what I have found is that your destination is on the right. Man, these hand gestures, bro, like these cars are just so advanced. And so what I'm getting at is that, you know, our company wants to avoid in using the resources time and time again for the same exact file. We'd rather do one efficient job one time quickly to help you save time so you can get into the, you know, get outside, uh, hit the streets and with your realtor and start shopping for the home of your dreams or start shopping for the, the home that you are going to raise your family, whatever situation fits that prospect. And so that's a, a, a very, very effective way of how to get the full package, but more importantly, get it quick is you actually dangle that carrot and you offer that incentive but more importantly you offer the incentive of getting the full package so now it becomes this challenge for your buyer and trust they love challenge they love these little games they love the 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 use of that that fear of missing out like oh i don't want to miss out on that lender credit man i could do this i could give you that full package and so when they give you that full package and you make no like oh hey congratulations you qualified even if they didn't, right? Like, because there's going to be sometimes that just not going to give you all the full package. Now you have reason to leverage the sense of urgency. It's like, hey, man, I want to get you that that five hundred dollar into credit, but you're missing this, this, and this. When can you get it to me? Oh, you can't get it until tomorrow morning. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna make a quick note right here that you know to extend your twenty four hours to thirty six, but but my manager is only going to do that if you ensure that you give me those items by tomorrow morning. Can you do that? Yeah, I'll get it to you tomorrow morning, man. I don't want to miss out this $500 lender credit. Okay, I'm going to go and do it right now and I'm going to follow up with you tomorrow. You see, that in itself, when you get your, your prospects to comply, that's already that trust and loyalty gain. But more importantly, I... Uh, psych psychologically they've already invested into you because now you have their full package and the last thing they want to do is go and restart the process all over again but more importantly when you foster that relationship you need to be able to Com consistently keep in communication with them, right? And sometimes as loan officers, we don't know what to say back to them. You know, it's very awkward to say, to give them a call every two weeks and be like, hey, you know, I just want to make sure you're thinking about me. So what's the topic do you use? And here's the primary topic. The topic is when you call them every other week or, or every two weeks and you check in, your whole purpose of checking in is to basically make sure that they don't need any revisions on their pre-approval letter, is to make sure that, that nothing has changed with with regards to their you know their spending power or their ability to buy like their income or their employment um, you know no credit inquiries you want to share with them hey you want to avoid any credit inquiries avoid applying for any financing and if you do do a credit inquiry just give me a heads up just let me know right but more importantly get, let me know before you do the credit inquiry this is really gonna help you I don't want for whatever reason any credit inquiry to be the reason why you don't get the house of your dreams or or, or prolong your your 
shopping experience. And so what you're doing is you're setting up the expectation right from the very beginning. So once you get the documents in, they're already vested. So they're in more in tune with what you have to say, because again, you've been the consultant, you've been the tour guide, you've been driving that ship. And so your message is saying, okay, from here on out, now that I, you got your pre-approval letter, I'm going to check in with you every two weeks. So please expect the call, expect the text, expect the email, because I need to make sure that your pre-approval letter doesn't need any revisions or you know, if you happen to come across an area that has an HOA, I need to update your pre-approval to make sure that you are financially strong to make an offer, but more importantly, protected to make an offer so you're not wasting your time or wasting your earnest money deposit. And so these uh, bi-weekly check-ins are going to ensure that you stay in front of your prospects, but now they are expecting the call. They're expecting the text messages and they're going to comply. Now, here's a little bonus. If you want to give them a more, more important incentive to expect your call is say, Hey, you know, when you, when you shop for these houses and you might, you might going to uh, find one, right? Where you want to know a little bit more about it text me or email me or call me with the address and I'm going to give you all the specifics on that home. How long the previous owner has owned it or how long the existing owner has owned it. Um, you know, how much they owe on the property on their last refinance or, or for example, um, you know, the school rating within that school district or how much the average comps are selling for. You know, the important information that you should know before you invest your time and money inside that home, I can give you access to it. And ultimately what you're doing is you're talking about property profile, but you're not using Using that word because you want to make it exclusive to you. Otherwise, they're going to tell anyone like, "Oh yeah, this person gives me a property profile." The the realtor, or another law officer, say, "Man, I got a property profile." Call it the neat report or something like that. Call it the analysis report. Call it the the insider scoop. Right, whatever you got to call it. Basically, what you're doing is the, doing the. Um, property profile report. So those are three ways to capture the the attention and the you know the interest from your buyers and to make it an easier way to kind of juggle that initial experience because it's important that you foster the right relationship in the right way with these home buyers because that is ultimately going to be your bridge and when you set them out there in the free world the last thing you want them to do is become disloyal to you where they go and jump ship because of pricing or they go and jump ship because another realtor um you know re recommended them to their to their preferred lender or or worse yet the loan officer us we were slipping and we didn't do our our, our ex we didn't set up the expectation properly and so they don't think that you know they have any ties to us there's no loyalty to us but more importantly they don't even like us because we sounded awkward on the phone so i hope that this message helps you in generating a, a more stronger relationships with your buyers please comment below let me know which of the three tips or maybe timestamp a section in this video that you found most helpful and let the others know that are watching this by sharing the link but more importantly like subscribe and hit that little alert bell so that you are alerted for tomorrow and wednesday's most important videos on how to survive as a purchase loan officer and how to survive as a loan officer period going into 20 19. I appreciate your time. Again, my name is Daniel with At Sales Remastered, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye. Let me show you everything I know. A jungle slide.